let's let's jump right into it. Um, you know, it's been a long time, two years since a majority North American team uh, has won a major, and uh, and G two has done it. Uh, they had, you know, didn't have to play Europe the whole time. Because unfortunately, they're just not good enough to make finals anymore. It, I don't know. We'll talk about that later, but <laughs> it, it, it's looking kind of shocking. Um, and but yeah, six and zero or six and one. They yep. they finished only dropping that that really really shocking sw- uh, sweep to the to the Falcons. Um, and you know, just an incredible major for for all three of the for all three players for the coach for the team. Beller, I gotta ask you: Is it time to officially, after a little bit of a down period? Declare NA is back. Are we are we getting caught up in the moment? Because it feels like if we were to go through and power rank all the teams, I wonder how far it would take us to get to the second North American team. You know? Mm-hmm. So is NA back? TBD for me. We'll see what the world championship shows us. But this G2 team, man, I know we're going to talk about them a lot. I was going through trying to think about how to place them historically because you're like, yeah, like they made all the grand finals, this and that. Incredible record, 71% winning percentage over the season. But how do they stack up against the big boys? You know, the Dignitas of old and things like that. I mean, they have a way better record than any of the teams that I could find historically. 45 and 8 on the season. That's incredible when we have never seen this quality of rocket league. So I don't know what to say. I, I, when people were saying, you know, is this the start of a dynasty? I was like, feels too quick, but yeah, I don't know, man. (laughs) They're really good. Well, let me, let me be the first to say, I feel like maybe NA is not back yet, but Mm. I think we have set, we have set the path, the inciting incident, the inciting season for NA to be back, and this is my theory, okay? Mm-hmm. RLCS X, right? RLCS X, we had a team in Europe completely dominate. There was no parity. They were good. There was one team. There was a team that would come in every once in a while and steal it, but BDS was that team. And BDS set a standard that was so high that the entire region had to p- catch up if they ever wanted a chance, mm-hmm. right? You could say that NRG was was kind of that team, but it wasn't the same. You had SSG dominating a split. You saw you saw Envy really compete with them. Uh, G two at the end of the season when they picked up Drees really caught steam. But to me, this feels like the, a new standard has been set for North America. There's no more, you know, no offense to that that team, but Spring Space Station one seed when they were probably the seventh or eighth best team in the world at that point. Um, I think th- this is a, a culture changer, if that will be. That the best team in the world, the best player in the world can be for North America after it looked like it would never going to happen, right? So um, I'm not ready to call it back yet. I think we're still kind of a two two to three team region with maybe six six like world-class players, seven world-class players. Sure. But I see them as a, as, as a, as a yeah, that culture changer. Because remember, this is something we don't talk about. EU was the most friendship region before RLCSX. Like, all those players that were in league play, they just got out of there right away. Like, all these young players that were just, like, that were better were being held out by the friendship, like, allegations that we used to have. And you had so many players come in um, because they weren't teaming the way that the NA teams had all these young players teaming with the peeps and the birds and the bees and stuff and forcing Mm -hmm. their way into RLCS. Um, I feel like... This G two team feels like that BDS where it's like, okay, there's a new standard in this region, and once the other teams catch up, the fact they get to play that level is 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 really really imp- is really motivating and and like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's I'm really optimistic about the future of the region if this is what they have to aspire to. And it doesn't seem like it's slowing down, right? It's not like it's a, like a vitality last season where it's like, yeah, you know, but like Alpha is getting towards and it's esports, so we don't really know like the twilight of your career is a little. The, it's a more of a gray area than it is in traditional sports. But with this team, mm-hmm. all young, Sathu seems to be a great coach. He has a lot of synergy with Atomic, even going back into the day with the JNAP Chicago lineups, of course. Daniel and Beast mode have been boys for a while, 2v2 Titans. So this team kind of has set up a path here forward where it could hypothetically, like, I, I don't really know what the stop would be here. What, what is, I don't even know what the fear is. Like 
Yeah. Who is the contender who's going to come up here? I don't even think there's an iteration of another North American team that I'm more afraid of than this trio. Like, even if we trade pieces amongst the yeah. other top rosters, I still think I would pick G2. I, I think there's also a, a precedent for G2 of, like, sustained excellence. Maybe mm. not at the level that, of excellence that we've seen. But, I mean, the Chicago JNAPS uh, Atomic roster had a, I believe went first I think they won the final regional of the winter then won the winter major then were first first second then finished second at the world championship so they already had a six grand final or win streak this one has an eight grand final win streak and Sathu you know if, if anything has proven that he's able to get a lot out of his players over an extended period of time because G2 while they weren't like world beaters last season were, were quite competitive up leading up to like the Obviously, like there was issues with Jane Apps's house burning down, um, but outside of like literally horrible circumstances, you know they were the model of consistency in North America um, for the whole season. So yeah, I mean, I, I want to talk about you know what you talked about with the players and specifically Mr. Mode. So, yeah, I can say Mode freely. Bella, they they hate me for saying mode. They say I should say BMO, but it's just mode. That's just I that's saw the, the name. I saw the clip. I'm not gonna give my two cents because you and I really have a rhythm going so far. So <laughs> anyway, Mr. Mode, Mr. Landon himself, Landon, Landon, in Landon. himself. <laughs> yes, exactly. Landon was in Landon. Um, listen, we've seen this with this kid before, right? There's random weekends. I used to always say, best player in the world is Beast Mode when he feels like it, but mm. he only seems to feel like about twice, twice a year. Um, it was inevitable that one of those weekends where he looks completely clear, the way he did at G8, the way he's looked at in a couple of regionals, um, it was going to land on a land week in one of these days. And, and he looked like just a, a very special, a special, special generational talent, exactly what G2 wanted when they let go of their legacy rosters to pick up someone of this level. So my question to you is, is, is are we talking, you know, I mean, we'll get to it a little bit later, but... Has, has he done enough to be considered best in the world right now with all the competition? Yeah, man. I mean, definitely in the conversation. I think the thing that's exciting about Beast Mode is it's not cookie cutter. And the way that they can beat you and cut you up is there's a multitude of ways, whether it's Beast Mode going super physical, demo heavy, upfield, trying to redirect, or if he's hanging back, going for the ceiling challenges, trying to create into transition. There's a lot of ways that he can burn you. Even on zero boost, he's dangerous. I just think when you are that dynamic of a player and can have an impact in so many ways, uh, you know, that that helps a lot. It helps that his teammates are Daniel and Atomic. But I think Beast Mode is definitely in the conversation. I feel like in the version one days, like you said, you know, he would wax and wane here and there. You'd see him. You wouldn't. If you were a random fan who showed up and didn't follow the scene, you wouldn't think he was anything special in certain series. And then he'd pop in other ones. But now it seems like he's raised his floor to a level of greatness that has him consistently performing in these events. And again, three people per team really helps that his teammates are so incredible. Maybe yeah. in a vacuum, we look at it different, but you know, that's the context that we talk about the C sport in. So I think he's definitely at the top. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've been a champion of the kid, but what, what one thing I want to kind of highlight was that um, we shift talk to, to beast mode at the at the major you know yep. we were doing post game interviews you can see them all on this youtube channel actually as well as read them on shift gg shout out finn and uh exactly he was he's doing doing the time of his life kind of looks look kind of looks like there was one player kind of looked like it was hoxer i think you know, him and hoxer were kind of twinning the, so shout out to finn. solo yeah the same kind of flow yeah. i'm with you yeah same but you body saying? kind of phenotype i guess is the word i don't know <laughs> um and uh you know what what beast mode said was that losing the process of obviously the very public kind of three three lands that he missed last year, it made him change the way that he wanted to be played, that he wanted to play. And mm -hmm. I think um, what you've seen from him this year that's made him so good, and he's always been in the conversation for the best player in North America. He, like he said, he, like I said, he's had his weekends where he looks clear. But I think you saw it starting at GA, which was the first kind of time we saw them after they failed to make the world championship, after they failed to w w make the spring major, where it felt like it wasn't, like uh, a hard carry play style anymore. Like yep. you said, it was, you know, being physical. It was being like controlling touches. It was being like valuable on, on, on low boost and making the right play constantly and playing more midfield than just, you know, get me the ball and get out of the way. And I think it's really cool to see 
a player grow from losses when they can continue to get paid and they can continue to get big stats by playing the way they want to play. But you see, you know, I think about players like Itachi. I think about players like Seiko, where they came in as these mechanical phenoms. Even, I, I think, to a lesser extent, someone like Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they come in as mechanical phenoms, but they they care enough uh, in a way to... They care enough about winning enough to change the way they play in order to win. Like, it just, that becomes the goal. It doesn't become clips, it doesn't become staff, it doesn't become salaries, it's just about winning. And I think he's been able to keep the dynamic element of his playmaking while also rounding out his game really nicely, which I think some players never learn. Like, I love Yan, but he's still struggling to figure that out, right? And we saw it on display in the semifinals, is that there was one team where their talisman was able to morph his game to what was needed in the situation. There's another one who was up with boost and he would dominate you, but you could steal his boost and keep him away. So I'm just so super impressed, super impressed by Beast Mode. And I cannot wait to see him at the Shift Summer League. I can't wait to see him at the uh, Esports World Cup. And I cannot wait to see him at the World Championship. Yeah, and, and to put a bow on that point, I mean, the Yan, you know, the heliocentric offense, you kind of are Monstar sucking away the powers mm-hmm. of your teammates, where Drufino is playing a much different role than what he did previously. The same goes for Lost. Of course, we saw them look incredible against a battered and bruised Vitality team, but to kind of go back to G2, I mean, it's buy-in across the board, and that's why mm-hmm. I think we're going to talk about it a little later, but Sathu deserves all the flowers for getting all three of these number one options previously in their careers to all coalesce into something that is greater than their individual power. I mean, we saw Daniel really locking things down defensively. Atomic, I mean, Atomic was the guy a couple seasons ago Mm. in all of North America, and he has decidedly opted to, you know, kind of take a little more of a shadowing role to beast mode, um, you know, especially as we see him winning the MVPs and the honors and everything. Um, for all of them to be able to decidedly make this playstyle work together um, is is something that definitely has led to them making every single grand finals this season, which sounds yeah, crazy to it's, say. It's like. I think, and we've talked about this on this podcast before, the the kind of coach player duo and how valuable it is. Where you know, I'm so glad I can make some some nice NBA references without being chastised. You know, back in the day, they used to say Tim Duncan would let Greg Popovich yell at him mm. because all the other players were like, if he's allowed to yell at Tim Duncan, then I can't get upset. Right? Pop yells at everybody, and we see it exactly. And so it's like you see it with Itachi and Eversax, you see it with Atomic and Sathu, the two top major winners this season come with a coach and a player, a star player that is setting a tone right away for his teammates that we're going to listen to the coach, we're going to implement the coach's play style, we're going to play the way the coach wants to play. And for an eSport that has always struggled to listen to their coaches, you're starting to see, I mean, going back to last year with Vitality and Farah, that the teams that really lock in on maximizing their coach's value and the coaches who are able to maximize their player's value are starting to become the top teams in this esport and you can't just win off talent anymore but let's talk about legacy all right that's what Mm. we do we're a talk so we're a podcast we can't be doing nuance we have to be talking legacy okay go a little first take on that i want to hear belair if you had to in your in your like head canon of north american all-time greats now where have daniel beast mode and atomic catapulted up to because there's some real there's some real implications to this championship Um, that is a fantastic question. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm not doing the silly thing of forgetting about like the all time great, like, it's like you're going through listing the best centers ever and you find yourself at eight and you just didn't even mention Shaq. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not forgetting anybody, but I Okay. So one thing I want to, I'm going to start trying to integrate this into like Rocket League talk. Create my cloud. You know, you know how there's, we talk about in sports, like Okay, I, I'm going to use the NBA again because I can. This is great. Pre-merger, <laughs> right? We don't talk, sure. okay, this, since the merger, or like in, in uh, you know, there's other sports that have that as well. I mean, the Premier League's only been around for like 50 years or something. Um, I think we should start separating it. Pre and post flip reset. Ooh. Because I don't think it's fair with such a core mechanic that has essentially defined the game that we class players like Cronovi who... The best part of his career, he couldn't even use the most useful mechanic in the game. 
he does should not have to be judged against Squishy and Atomic and 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 Justin if he couldn't even use that when he was at his best. Right? They didn't even have a Finnick for solid 50-50s. I mean, exactly, what, what are you supposed dude. To like do? Fireburner had to like learn how to do it. He was the yeah. only one who could do it on an octane, apparently, or a Dominus. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna ask you post flip reset, which I believe was like season two or three. Mm-hmm. I have to get an exact date if I'm gonna push this narrative, but nonetheless, mm-hmm. who, who's, who's, where, where are they? So don't, I mean, don't, 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 don't put those guys in there because it's not fair to them. It's. I want to make sure I'm not getting caught up in the moment. So who are we thinking about NRG when they first brought together, you know, the Garrett squishy, Justin, it was like, Oh my gosh, how can so you possibly beat though, this right? team? But they didn't really they have didn't the same results. Yeah, they, they didn't, didn't see him at land. land. Really. Cloud nine has to be mentioned. Although they came in as kind of underdogs over that Dignitas team. G2 have been no, front that, runners that's the whole way. Um, they won four lands, right? Is that true? I believe they're they were four time land champions. God, uh, let, back let me, when let they me, had like back when they yeah, had like when one a lot year. of yeah exactly. Well, no, no, but that I'm talking about outside of RLCS, right? Mm-hmm. Back in the back in the day, um, let me see. Yeah, so they won Ely. No, they didn't win Ely. Where have I gotten this from? They won E League was a G two, and then like that. Uh, I think yeah. like I ignites like TSM or something. One one. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure I get this right. Maybe they didn't win four. Maybe I'm like thinking of NRG or something. But anyway, I, I, to me they they got to be there. I'm thinking these my top three. To be honest with you, hit me. Season like core C nine. I think the most iconic maybe team of all time. Of course. Um. I got Justin Squishy, uh, sorry, Justin Garrett Turbo. Yeah. Right. Three time land winners, I believe. I think they won World Series of Esports. I think they won X Games. They won the Season 8 World Championship. They did. And I'm going to be honest, number three, Daniel Beast Mode Atomic. I got them over Atomic Chicago JNAPs. I got them over JNAPs. I mean, I'm just talking about results, right? Mm-hmm. I got, I, I, I put them over. Justin Squishy Garrett because they didn't get a chance to play land. I can't put any of those RLCS X teams. That's fair. Above a team that went that went to back to back lands and finished second and first. It's not their fault. It really isn't. But they've done just as well as NRG did online, and they've dominated the uh, the online. And like, to be honest, I don't think that NRG team would have beaten BDS because I think I look at the way they played BDS in that Sweden major and they look like it was a playstyle problem. I think SSG would have had a better chance against them with typical Arsenal Rettles. I think Envy would have had a better chance. And I could be convinced that FK would have probably cooked them too because he cooked them before after on phase, right? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, Wait, we're, we're think, doing a, a first take segment right now? Yes, yes. <clears throat> G2 is the best season. team of all time. Of all time. No one will no, ever be better than them. I think three is very fair. Three NA right now. And it can go up. If they win the world championship, I think we got to start talking about them being the best roster to ever ever come from North America. I think that's fair, especially if it's another grand finals. Nine for nine mm-hmm. is just preposterous. Um, yeah. So that that's that's I'm not I'm not balking at that. Yeah. And then individually for me, I think this jumps atomic into the top five NA all time. Mm. I think you have a very clear top five NA all time, actually. It's Squishy, Justin Garrett, Jane Apps, Jane Apps, Atomic. I was waiting for it. Atomic. I thought he might yeah, be number one. Two. No, I, that was in no order. That was in no order. Yeah. To me, it's Squishy, Justin Garrett, Atomic, Jane Apps. That is your absolute tier one of North American Rocket League pros historically. I think you put Cronovi, Gimmick, Torment, uh, Chicago. I think you can even sl- slip like a Mist in there, an FK in there in that second tier. Mm-hmm. But that top tier, I think he's joined it. He's he has as good a resume as anybody in the open era. It's now him, Monkey Moon, and Seiko who are now all on four grand finals and lands in the open era and two cha- land wins. So it's setting up quite a little. I mean, I wanted to talk about this later, but the world championship is setting up to be quite quite an interesting narrative of the race to that third one. Vatira, the entirety of Vitality, Itachi and Seiko, Atomic, Monkey Moon, and I think. I think that's it. Are all on two land wins. Man. That's basically every contender besides Jet. Besides, I think that's all the. That's five of the top six teams besides Falcons. Yep. All one of those teams is going to have the first three time land winners in the open air and tie Kato for RLCS land wins. So I, I'm really excited to see that. But it's unfortunate yeah, that OG Esports is going to win the whole thing. 
and just throw a wrench into <laughs> don't it. Don't talk but... to me about. Don't talk to me about that team, man. <laughs> but, they, they, uh, don't talk. I don't want to talk about that team right now. But yeah, well, I think Beast Mode. I think Beast Mode's got a chance. I got an outside shot at top ten all time NA right now, just because of the he has sneakily a f- ridiculous resume. He's won a show match where it was just basically him. And then him and Dan, like, mm-hmm. he had to play every mode. He backpacked him to that. He's got a second-place finish at an RLCS major. He's got a major MVP and a major championship. He's got a top three with V1. He's got a top six with V1. He's got seven la- seven regional wins. I think he's there as well. And Sathu, man, I mean, him and Atomic, they pretty much share, share resumes in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Five S-tier events, four of those are top two, and two of those are wins. I mean, you want to talk about efficiency at the top. I mean, insane. if they're good, you know, Sathya will give you that little extra oomph. When typically yeah. I kind of look at a coach as like kind of a glamour ad where it's mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't really know how additive they are. Um, mm-hmm. But again, back to the different structures and styles that G2 can put up. Um, it helps when you have, again, when you're flush with talent. But um, we could go on and on about singing the praise yeah. of this team because they deserve it. They've been excellent. Yeah. All season. No, no. And I think the last one I want to talk about um, is, you know, what you mentioned is, so we talked about, is this a dynasty or one off moment? So I genuinely want you to think because it, it's by no fault almost of a team that does this well, that they don't win again at the biggest stage, because a lot of the time, the more you play, the more tape there is on you. And sometimes naturally play, teams just, they play you so many times. They watch so many replays that they, those little things where you don't have that, if a new roster forms or, or something like that. I think the world championships, their best chance to win again, because there's going to be no more new rosters that you can't get a read on where they'll have the upper hand because they'll be know how to play G2 and G2 no, won't know how to play them. But I want to ask you, do you genuinely think that this team could stay like together, like on like vitality NRG levels of lengths and really, really dominate? I do, man. I mean, I think if you're going to kind of fork in the road to destinies, to outcomes, them winning this hot take Bel Air, them winning this <laughs> makes them more likely to win the world championship. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you get up to the summit twice and you can't overcome that and win one of these, yeah. maybe you kind of get into your head in the moment, you know, even just a, totally. a parting thought about, can we do this or not? But now they've shown that they're the best in the world and they, smacked this Falcons team who clearly looked rattled, clearly looked like it was a big moment for them. And you kind of have to take those lashes before you can get over the hurdle. Totally. There's not a lot of situations where we have Zen, like, uh, you know, rookie performances yeah. in, in this sport. So now G2 have got there, couldn't get over the hump, decided to, you know, come back stronger and get here. Uh, I, I don't see any reason why G2 can't win this again. Uh, but for Falcons, you know, they're going to have another land before uh, we mm-hmm. even get to the world championship. I think they have Saudi E-League. Um, yeah, and then I, I, I'm not sure if the Esports World Cup is crew battles anymore. Don't quote me on that, but I think they might have gone away with that. Okay. I think it might just be straight up 3v3 now. I could cool. be totally wrong, though. Please, like, if you're listening to this, please do you not heard quote it here me. First. Because, <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I saw kind of some weird language, but, um, you know, just on quickly on to... to to finish off about this, I think um, what you mentioned earlier on, you said that they have so many, they, their players are willing to kind of morph and mm-hmm. play different roles. I think that gives them a lot of an advantage. And I think it's something very interesting in this esport that you're going to start to see with rosters sticking together longer. Maybe this is a hot take, but I think because you have to be so good at this game to compete at the highest level, that, but in like energy, what was the energy plan? Sit, 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 sit. Accumulate boost, get them to overcommit, Justin, go. Okay, well, we figured that out, right? What was the the SSG plan? Daniel and uh, Rattles and Arsenal, you know, go go get boost, go demo, Daniel, get the ball boost. They're like, even BDS was like, is like, control the midfield, mark by eight, go bother somebody, force first man, and Monkey Moon, get the ball and do something. I think now with how good players are, if you start to get figured out, you can just change it. And it's not like, you know, you used to hear people being like, oh, we're trying out a new play style. Like, no, you can straight up just swap everyone's roles. Okay, now beast mode, now you're going to play third man. Daniel, go chase, right? And while tendencies still exist, you can change those tendencies if you have every tool in your toolkit. And it'll be interesting to see if they start doing that the longer they go. And I think something else that they're able to deploy, which we see with greatness, is 
the addition of something new and it's not like ceiling defense is new by any sense mm-hmm. but beast mode's proficiency with it like for anybody it's listening insane. the next time you're watching a g2 match just like have a running tally of how many times beast mode totally kills an offensive push with a ceiling like defensive challenge mm-hmm. it's unbelievable how good he is at those when you could <laughs> totally be put out of position i i think the addition of something new like that that teams haven't really prepped for you can't really scrim that because not everybody's very good at that it yeah. is kind of siloed within the g2 style uh, you mm-hmm. know that that's something that you that you can't prep for um which i think well, is you another know, edge if you guys actually want to see you don't have to wait for the next time they play because bel-air just dropped a beast mode mvp hey. analysis video that you can see where can i see that bel-air it's on youtube if you've heard of it uh, bel-air baller just search me you know we had the beast mode one that came out with the mvp stuff the other day we had a beast mode video right before the major dropped i can't stop talking about mr connerman it seems like yeah but, dude, uh, you just, know. who wants to stop you know I hey. wake up in the morning and I remember he's a major MVP and it puts a smile on my face. I know? wake up, I brush my teeth, and I'm watching some Landon on the side, you know? Exactly. It's perfect. What I can't think of a better way to get up, to be honest. Uh, um, but yeah, let's shift over to the losing team, shall yeah. we? Team Bums. Falcons absolutely dominated this tournament leading up to their finals. Unfortunately, similar to the last London event, that domination ended in shocking fashion, right? 4-1 by G2. Uh, many people saying this was their best and maybe only chance for this roster to win in RLCS land. I vehemently disagree, and it sounds like it feels like you do too. Talk I do. To me. I, I, this was not Falcons as we've known them. Mm-hmm. Kaleers was not himself. Heavy first touches, he- handing the ball away the entire time, was not an effective striker. Seemed like the only one who was at close to 100% was TRK. And totally. if you have a roster with Ruas and Kaleers and, you know, don't quote me on this, but I think they're probably going to stick as a duo. I think they um, have some, th- there's a little, there's something there. There's some know. cohesion, like, almost like a there brotherhood seems to be. Yeah. Don't, I'm, I will, I swear. I don't want to hear that stupid T word they use, but, um, like, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, there's something there. I could that for sure. I don't I think, know what it is. But. I think so. And, uh, TRK is not slowing down. Um, yeah. I came into well, this event. They can't upgrade Mina. I don't care what anyone says. I I, I understand Nupo can do cool stuff mm-hmm. in terms of like scheming and like he's got a lot to learn. You can't get better Mina than the three they have. That's the best possible roster. That's your front man. That's your on the field veteran who mm-hmm. still totally has it. Um, I think this roster is sick. I don't see anybody popping up in Mina who's going to challenge the throne. Uh, I I am unconvinced of any reason why Falcons will not be able to continue doing this for the world championship and seasons to come. So long as this roster is together. Yeah, totally. I would agree. I think, um, like you said, you got, you got to get your experience. Like the twins for they've, they've been around for a while, but they didn't make their first two majors and the first two splits they played. They had a great run, um, in their second, in their first major, didn't play any American born players. That's that's the problem. They did not play a single American-born player in Boston. And as we've learned, Mina just doesn't like playing NA. I would love a Bel Air video, honestly, on why Mina can't really beat NA that well, other than like a certain Swiss match. There's some there's something about it because the 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 matchups are actually kind of insane. I'm pretty sure NA is like like ten and four or something in the last two years in inter inter regional matchups. Man. So it's an interesting thing. Yeah, like they 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 t- they usually beat them, which is weird because they play on European servers and we hear about it all the time. Um, but yeah, this team, I think they needed, they were, it looked, they were like a little overconfident maybe Mm. like, Hey, we just smacked these guys. We just beat the best, the previous major champions of walk in the park. They get punched in the face game two, uh, sorry, game three in that, in that, with that zero second goal. And then it feels like they never recover, but these are really young players. Like we saw, we've seen outside of Zen, like you said, and we've seen every prodigal rookie come in and have to like figure it out and trk shockingly young only like 18 years old um so he's you know he's been around for a while but still you know relatively young compared to some of the big stars now um so i think this team's only getting better i still kind of delusionally believe they're the best team or not the best team in the world but i think i still would put my money on them to win the world championship i think that they have the formula they just needed to lose a little bit to figure out, hey, this is how we're going to do it against the best teams in the world and not random Mina of six seeds. 
I agree. And I, th- I think it's always a little tough when it's kind of like, um, what's a, what's a good comp for this? Maybe this is, this is too niche, but do you remember back in the day when like Boise state would go like 16 yeah, and zero field? Yeah. Yeah. And they wouldn't play anybody cause they were in some nobody conference and mm-hmm. then they would come up to the big leagues for like, you know, the bowl games. Yeah, they play in a bowl game and they and get and they lose by like well they sometimes they lose by like ten, but they yeah. might have won if they were playing, you know, some of these group of five college football teams. Oh, I get to talk about college football on Safecast. <laughs> this is awesome, dude. Um some of those group of five teams, yeah. Sometimes it's just the experience they need. I think about UCF a few years ago. Yep. Um, right, going undefeated for all those the University of Central Florida as for a went there for everyone in Europe. That's how you should know where it is. But that was a college football team that went eleven or thirteen and zero against lesser competition, sort yeah. of a Falcons esque run. But we're pretty much as good as any team in the country. So yeah, I totally agree. It's like that. And I think once they, you know, they're gonna get a lot of land experience here. They're gonna get esports World Cup. They're gonna get into the World Championship. I, I really like. And then after that, we'll talk about it later, but the FIFA E World Cup, I don't know when that's going to be, but either way, it's another international tournament that they'll probably be competing in as a trio. So super excited, super excited to see, uh, you know, what happens with this team. I really think their best days are ahead of them. And people are just playing, uh, they just they just saw what happened last time to the mm-hmm. last Falcons roster after London, and they just think it's going to happen again. But I, I don't agree. Um, yeah, so let's talk about teams that were in the finals. Who really cares, but... I guess we have to. <laughs> um, but we saw something that's never happened before, which is really cool. Uh, for the first ever four region top four Man. in RLCS. Furia taking out Vitality in absolutely bombastic fashion. Trufino throwing up the middle finger. Zen ready to scrap. <laughs> it was an absolutely legendary end. Can't wait for that rivalry to hopefully get its grudge match in uh, in Dallas. Um uh, Gentle mates uh, did something to BDS that you know BDS you know they for as great as they have been they love to have an absolutely brutal 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 loss on land for no reason um, and then G two and Falcons filled out the rest so here's my question for you Bel Air now that we've had kind of a couple lands where the top Sam and Mina teams are kind of matching placements or outplacing uh, NA and EU teams are we are we ready to call Mina and Sam just like part of the big four regions? Are we are we having a four region talk now, or is it still are they still expansion regions? Am I am I out of the loop? Am I inclusive ahead of the curve here? I already thought that we had four who were kind of up near the top, or maybe a one and then a three below them. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's tough when the math makes it very challenging. Where if we were to send, we've we've seen that these Sam two seeds are mm-hmm. always way more venomous than we assume they will be. Mm-hmm. We've even seen like when Team Secret beat version one in the quarterfinals. Yeah, what four. was that? Yeah. And that fake land that didn't that didn't happen. Hey, the, the best team won, Gen G, you know? What are you gonna sure. do? But sure. I think we've already seen that these Sam teams, and now it's to the point where a couple seasons ago you would look at like your, you know, four through seven and you'd be like, I don't know who these guys are. Mm-hmm. Now you look and it's like, oh, you know. AJG is here, Kayo is here, like, you know, even complexity is not. Mm-hmm. We kind of have enough players in SAM where it's like, oh, these are competitive. If we were sending mm-hmm. four SAM teams, I think this conversation would be easier to have because we would see the talent that's here. Um, of course, mm-hmm. it doesn't extend all the way down. I feel like Mina is a lot more top heavy yeah. than what we see from SAM. Um, but I, I, you know, if, if, at the end of the day, we're just taking the top seed from all of these regions and then everyone who Europe brings, how can you not consider Sam and Mina up with the big boys? Because clearly Falcons and Furia are just as competitive as, you know, the Gen G's of the world. It's tough because there's G2 hmm. there. But, you know, yeah. I, I, I think it's I think it's time. How do you feel about it? I'm going to have to disagree with you. I still got more so Mina Sam, I, I, I'll hear out. But to me, being a, a major region is about depth of talent, mm. not the top teams. Um, to me, I, I look at this. I look at this major three North American teams, like the same amount of North American teams as European teams made top eight. Yep. This, there is only one interregional matchup for both, so it's not like one of them just got like free trips in. They were both sure. guaranteed to spot in the top four. Same amount of North American and European teams in the top four, and then. There was no European teams in the final. So um, 
I think NA, the depth is still there, even though we make fun of NA depth. Like, Sam, t- Sam too, hasn't had a great year at LAN compared to other years, right, where they were getting top eights, top fours. Like, last year, I believe it was Sam Tu got a top eight, they got a top four, and then they bottomed out two top 16. All the Sam teams, I think, went top 16 mm-hmm. at the World Championship. But to me, it's like, your to be a major region, I need to see, like, two, like, of, if you're setting... Let's say if say because if Sam sent four, if they sent Nip, Complexity, Secret, and Furia, which I believe I think most people consider like I guess Crew as well. Yeah. I don't still think I still don't think that any of those teams beside Furia you would bet on to make the top eight um, over a space station, over an Oxygen, over a Luna Galaxy. I think a couple of them. And this is me being a homer. I don't think a couple of them I wouldn't bet to make top eight over my dogs on Shopify Rebellion. All right, because they're they're just gonna glass cannon all over them. Um, but to me, it's got to be. I want and I want this to happen. I want to see Sam show up with four teams at a hopefully an expanded land, and all of them challenge for top eight or feel like they should be in the top eight. I want to see Mina have two, three teams the way that NA does that you feel like can and will make top eight. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, they need to do that first. I think Sam's right there. I think give him a couple more years, they will be there. I think Mina's got a little bit to go. But yeah, those that's kind of my parameters. I think we have different parameters. You said the top team, I said the depth. So I think we're both right in a way. And I don't want to fight with you because you're my guest. But uh, for me, they got a little bit to go because you know your second best team not being a top eight team in the world when uh, NA and EU have both obviously had top eight teams as their one and two teams all season. Mm-hmm. Gen G still been a top eight team despite kind of a form fall off. Um, I think that's that's my kind of parameter for. A major region. I'm excited to hear Luna Galaxy getting a shout on the podcast. Didn't have that on my yes. bingo card. Uh, excited Dude, to hear it. A chronic gang. Okay, that BS plus competition. A chronic is still oh in my there somewhere. Goodness. They need to let me coach him. I'll bring it out of him. I'll tell you that. No more TikTok edits. No more TikTok edits of yourself on your own page. We're getting in. The, we're doing 120 a week. Or sorry, when, the past two weeks too much. When Twitter likes were public, a chronic was like you know the he demon. was in his own zone. Yeah. You know what? He got a lot of hate, but I was I was probably the same way at, when he was six when I was sixteen. Let's is not that, talk about it. Is that BS plus competition or is that logo a zebra? Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah, it's the zebra count one where he was he was playing with like freaky I think and there's just he was like one v three everyone. I, I thought he was gonna be I thought a chronic was gonna be what Zen was. I thought he, he was, was the best still. player on that liquid team when they brought in the youngsters yeah. in, initially. Yeah, literally, I was like, man, this guy's unstoppable. I, he's got a he's got a place in my heart, a chronic. I'm rooting for you. I believe in you. Let's see it. I hope you get to make the World Cup as a Portuguese. That would be really cool. Let's, anyway. let's bring it back. Can yes, I just I say one it. more thing? Twisted Talk. Minds, I'm unmoved. Um, yeah, I, totally. I, I mean, what happened to Ahmad? I feel like, of course, you have to have talent at some level. And maybe it's just, maybe it, there, there's, 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 how do you say, there's many ways to skin a rabbit or whatever that dumb saying is. <laughs> You can do what you got to do, but Twisted Minds, can we see a little bit of excitement and some, like, Mm. oomph when you're here at these LAN events? I feel like you kind (laughs) of need it to get you over the hump. It felt like they were just kind of here to to show up and business as usual. Uh, But, yeah, Mm -hmm. Mina does not have the depth. Um, I I guess we'll give it time, and we'll see where the the Team Rocks of the world end up going. Yeah, totally. I mean, it seems like there's, like, three Mina players per two years that come up and just rock our worlds mm. so good there's a good thing there's two mina spots that hopefully team rock will will kind of become the rule one to the falcons old falcons and challenge them and then start pushing up but yeah right now two one three finishes uh for mina two at both land events um lost the game to europe's 48th best team uh in that o2 round or i think the o2 round so i'm off that i'm good with i'm good without that anyway uh, let's talk about Europe and let's do some hating. How, how will we do that? Because we have I haven't hated on Europe in a good minute. I've been, been a good boy. I've been being <laughs> objective. They call me Mr. Fairness. And uh, now I get to finally do it. It's been a while. Europe has its worst, potentially its worst RLCS LAN ever. Right? You can argue there was they were pretty bad in LA. They were pretty bad in Season 7. But they got a team to the finals and they won one of those. Mm. No EU in the final for the first time ever in an RLCS LAN, only one team top four. I had to hear a bunch of bots on Twitter telling me that NA was finished and now they're winning lands in Europe, can't make top two. Now, now that I'm done hating, I'm going to be objective. 
is this a regression? Are, are, is Europe finally regressing? Are they getting complacent? Or has the rest of the world simply just caught up and now that we're playing a lot of international ball, you know, they don't get that, that's, that nice regional buff? Tough event. You have BDS get cannibalized by their own region and Gentlemates. Mm-hmm. And then Gentlemates, what a performance. Mm-hmm. About as good as you can get and still lose. That was such yeah. a great series. And Vitality had the kind of Redosin card that they can play here where he was sick. We don't get yeah. to see them at the peak of their powers. Maybe they overcome Furia. And that's the fourth time they played the season. So they really, that is a grudge match in like a true sense. Mm-hmm. So it seemed like Furia was bringing a little extra pizzazz to that one. So, you know, I think there's another world where Redosin's healthy and they overcome Furia and Gentlemates, you know, get the one or two things yeah, to roll their way. That was a game way. on the margins. That was a match on the margins. They exactly. lost that one there. So, you know, I think it's just kind of how the cookie crumbled this time. Um, really disappointed by Oxygen, only because Hootie's not here. Um, but, you know, that that was a, a rough showing for Europe. Uh, no Carmine Core. That's well documented why they weren't here. Um, but Best I, I major don't, ever, man. Hey, I don't see any regression. Um, I still think they are the dominant region. And, uh, you know, I, I, I still think the highest of them out of anybody. So I've been testing out a theory. Can I, can I, can I? Can I'm all I, ears. May I? Um, I think what we're seeing with Europe right now is a, is, is a better version. Like the teams are better than they were, okay. but it feels like we're kind of in the inverse of 2021, 2022. Mm. Cause if you remember in 2021, 22, we'd be like, man, NA has got SSG, G2, phase, uh, V1. Like, man, they could, they, you've got four in the top six in, in, in LA. We got four in the top eight in, in Dallas. Um, and then EU had Moist and BDS. And Carmen Corp was pretty good at that time, Noli Itachi, Astral. But Carmen, but it felt like there was two great teams in mm-hmm. Europe and then four very good teams in North America. Now, I think the four teams in Europe right now are better than the four teams in America were. Like I want to make that very clear before you know people take it out of out of context. But um I feel like the the fact that there's there's like an embarrassment of talent in Europe has almost handcuffed them from being able to do what other regions are doing. In North America, three of the four best players are on the same team. Maybe mm-hmm. the three best players, depending on who you ask. You could argue in Mina, it. the three best players are on the same team. In in Sam, three the three best players are on the same team. Agreed. Um, Monkey Moon is not, or maybe he is, but Monkey Moon has not been able to leave BDS. They're not going to let him go. Drali will probably be the same. Right, mm-hmm. um, Zen just locked down until 2026. No way that Carmen Corp's letting go of Atira. So these super teams can't form. Yeah. Right. And it's the same thing we saw with Atomic Beast Mode Daniel and First Killer back in the day in NA, where they couldn't move around because their their teams aren't going to let go of their best player that gets them great land results. Right. That's why they're in the the esport. Um, and so I think it's not that Europe's regressing. It's just that the rest of the world is able to do this ultra. Uh, aggregation of talent and they can't because there's too many good players right and like uh, I think that's why you see a team like Gentlemates who low-key are the most stacked team results wise I know it's because they want to land but like Itachi and Seiko are all-time greats in this game right oh, yeah um, and you know for as well as, as as for as good as Rise and Atto are they don't have the the cabinet that those guys have right yeah um, and so for me, it's, it's more of that maybe in the off season or when all these guys contracts is up, Europe needs to do a little, uh, they, they need to consolidate a little bit because they currently don't have a team that is as cut and dry best in the, uh, in the region, the way that NA, me and the Sam do. And I think the confidence you get from just bashing people's head and heads in all the time is actually really important. We've seen, we've seen in, in, in the events past. So that, that's my theory. Let me know what you think. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a great theory. I'm right there with you. Confidence is huge. Europe is the Western Conference of the NBA mm-hmm. where there's so mm-hmm. many teams. There's at the beginning of the season, there's, you know, in the NBA, there's what, 10 teams who hypothetically yeah. could make a finals. And it's like, oh my gosh, every team Seven has a great player, you know? Yeah. And then over in the East, you got the Celtics and then, you know, the Sixers. You got LJ Maxi. Exactly. LJ Maxi. <laughs> LJ Maxi. Out there just doing his best. You know, uh, Hawks are Embiid. I'm sure there's a better yeah. pun there, but, you know, um, it, it's just the, they have so much talent over in Europe. And the other thing that I think that we don't often consider 
it is a young esport, so you kind of do find these, you know, the rosters kind of come together through friendships mm-hmm. and things like that. And with Europe having so many countries that compile it, comprise it, you kind of get these little pockets that we're seeing be broken down more and more. But, you know, you kind of have your the Spanish players kind of team with mm-hmm. the Spanish players and whatnot. Yep. And I don't want to in overblow sa- in that South point. Africa. Yeah, you know. exactly. Exactly. That's that was my next <laughs> example. Thought. You stole it right out from under me. So, um, you know, you, you have that to contend with in Europe where you don't in North yeah. America. North America is North America. Everybody plays together. You know, mm-hmm. the boys of the boys, you can kind of create the G2s of the world. Uh, but yeah. I, I agree with you. Once these contracts kind of come up, once you have enough losing and a monkey moon gets to the point where he's like, dang, I really would want to play with Zen. Like, mm-hmm. you know. Then, then you'll kind yeah, of yeah. Or that. if you know, if a if a if a Atto goes, it was fun, but like I'm better than Juicy. I think I'm better than Juicy. I think they think I'm better than Juicy. Let me go over there and give them a boost, right? Who? If that's you had my, to, that's my that's a big thing. If you had to lock before Worlds one roster, who is the roster who you are the most convinced will stick going into next season? Um, in Europe? I don't think any of them will. Wow. I think they're all gonna. F- I think all those top rosters are gonna shuffle. Wow. I think. Um, I don't know about oxygen. Maybe because like they just don't have that much of like. Maybe if like maybe if, like Nolly or Jack want to go home or something, then maybe they'll they'll make a change. But where's Jory like, is going? China. Okay, I'm done with that guy. Enough. Ni hao. Put way too much stock in this year. Yeah. APAC. Get ready to learn virtuoso. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I think. Um, I think. I think all of them are probably going to just shuffle again because they just love doing that. They'll be the players, the pit, the pillar players that aren't allowed to leave, and they'll just kind of pick and choose who they want. Um, I would love to see, like, if in my in my dream world, I would just love to see Zen go to Gentle Mates for Juicy. I just think they could just win every event ever, but that's not happening. So, Gentle Mates, we'll same roster, write it in Sharpie for me. I okay. I don't know why you would okay. change that roster. Huge fan. I I think I think that they're going to get greedy. And I think they're going to think they can steal a better player than Juicy, but mm. I don't know. The yeah, MVP? Yeah, if, if there was going to be one. <laughs> Malcolm Butler. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's move on. Great major. Shout out to every player that was at the major. Shout out to Power, because I want to shout out Power. Shout out Dope Hunter team. from Chiefs. Man. Yep, great. He he really showed showed a little bit. Stopped playing basketball on the weekends or football or whatever he does and, and, and started balling. Um, yeah, shout out. it was a great major. It was really fun. Didn't have to look at the blue wall. Uh, Beast Mode won. Like, who's got it better than us?